my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay f calm! Wait, 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 wait! Everybody just f calm down! Help! Here! Oh! Take my hand! Ah! Come on! <laughs> You're gonna fall unless you take my hand! No! Give me your other hand! Oh, my other hand isn't strong enough! You take my little hand! No! Get it away from me! Break it! Break my hand! No. Hold on. What is that? What look is that you're going for? <laughs> the double. No, the triple glasses. <laughs> I'm living in the future, bro. <laughs> you, know, you know what you are. I am a maverick. I am a savage. I am a legend. I am a madman. You never know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I can see you are in they, 3D. Are now. they 3D glasses? <laughs> well, I need them, you know, for the 3D Boots and Heels book so I can God. make it properly. Yeah. Of course you do. Hang on. You're all full screen. I'll just, yeah, I'll just be like this for the rest of the episode. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah, up, yeah. everyone? <laughs> oh, shit. Hello, everybody. Hello. There's not many people here. We are, of course. I mean, it's, it's, we, we do resistance training these days. Being a CG live streamer, it's non-stop resistance training. You're always up against either a Shane, a John, an Ethan. It's uh, it is what it is. Uh, can't be helped. But uh, we didn't, we weren't able to do a draw stream this week because we were launching, well, this, and the uh, and the standee and selecting the winners. Congratulations again to Preston and uh, Shant and everyone else who was selected. But uh, we power on. We are here to. I've got to finish this thing. I've got a. I've got a few characters left to do their highlights properly. I've got some background stuff to fix, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this thing done in short order. It won't be tonight, but soon, very soon. Uh, I'm sure Camel is happy to hear that. And oh. Obviously, there's not enough people here for Camel. He's just bounced. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to uh, after post games. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Manny Fowler's here. Who else? Uh, Trevor Wright. Jeremy Burtz. Camel says not on time and homoerotic. Mm. Charlie Chan's here. How's your father? Uh, where's Jeremy? Jeremy Burtz is in the house. Atheline. Hello, D. It's with a bit of beer. I see who else? Uh, PewDiePie was Andrew Tate before Andrew Tate. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Camel got bored, says how's your father? Well, F us then. What a dick. <laughs> Hail Jolly Green. Great show tonight, Jeremy. I really enjoyed that discussion. I like that we didn't all agree. We had different different interpretations. I really Jeremy did a show tonight on the the Last of Us. Um, I gotta find out where the hell Camel went. He might have DM'd me. He might have private chatted me. Hold on a sec. He might have just have to restart his computer or something. I don't know. Um, and. Yeah, it was good. Like I, I don't obviously I don't remember the characters exactly how some of you do. Even though I did just watch a playthrough, like a walkthrough, just a couple of weeks ago. I don't know. I, I guess if different people have different interpretations, but it was a fun show. I'm going to enjoy more of those discussions. Hello, Fantasta, Phantasmagorical. Um, anyone want to give me a membership? <laughs> Ask how's your father. That's up to the generous people of the chat. That's up to them. I can't, I don't have a wheel, unfortunately, with me. 
the the wheel that I do have, the IKEA wheel, has been banished to the kitchen. Um, so I can't compel you through hypnosis to uh, to gift anything, but uh, we will see. We will see. I was just telling Camel here before he so unceremoniously just bounced. He still hasn't sent me anything. Uh, by the way, where's Rob? We don't normally stream tonight. We don't normally do a, a draw stream tonight. So Rob is Rob, uh, Rob is uh, apparently a busy man. He can't just drop things and come and hang in, and that's fine. We've done I've done solo draw streams before. That's fine. I've got no problem with that. I just wonder what happened to Camel. I hope he didn't uh, get swatted or something. Anyway, we'll continue on. Uh, asking you shall receive, D. <laughs> I hope you didn't feel pressured, D. But thank you, you absolute bloody legend. This one's for you, mate. Well, cheers, biggies. <laughs> yes, yes, cheers, biggies, indeed, you absolute legend. Welcome, uh, Eric. Jolly Green's back again. Phantasmagorical. How's your father? Ask and you shall receive. Hail D. Noren Rad, a member as well now. Fanta, you can call me Fanta. Thank you, I will. It's, it's easier to say. We're joined here by Sumo Thori. Uh, it's great to see you all here tonight. Yeah, I don't know what... Camel was just in here. Marco Sharpo is joining us. Uh, and he just... I don't know, I think he froze and then he... And then he left. So, he has the link should he want to rejoin. We'll just be... I was going to be... I just finished work. It is crazy hot here. I came in. I was just telling this to Camel before we went live. I came in because I was working in the office and it was 40 degrees here today in Melbourne, which is 110. No, yeah, about, about that. It's bloody hot. And Camel was like, that's not livable. <laughs> he was like, we live in the society. We can't, we can't deal with that. And uh, yeah, so inside the cottage, I came in about half an hour ago and it was 30 638 in here which is i think it's the high 90s like 98 and i've had the aircon blasting now for half an hour it's down to 27 which i think is in the high 80s but it's not pleasant but at least it's workable but uh either way i heard it was 37 the other day yeah it's we've had a few hot days they haven't been too bad this year thankfully we are of course uh live a uh, simulcast on rumble for anyone who wants to uh, uh hang out over there one day rumble will let me pop out their chat and i'll be able to see you all uh, we've got a couple watching over there fantastic celsius is stupid says eric no celsius is i agree with you americans on a lot of things but i will not agree with you on fahrenheit it just it, it doesn't make any sense celsius is uh, a superior system so I, mean, I don't know i don't know what else to say about that uh, water boils at 100 and freezes at zero everything else in between it all makes perfect sense to everyone except you guys i think i'm going to work on this dude here captain there we go what that, happened my internet just like hardcore was like god fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> it was like no yeah, the whole thing. I literally went in the other room and unplug it, restart it all up. I have no idea. It was really weird. Um, yeah, well, cool. I, I, I was just about to say, I was about to say, I'm going to work on, uh, what is it, Sergeant Merica here? Is that his name? Merica. M-U-R-I-K-A. Merica. Sorry. Merica. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Sorry so, to his friends. Sarge. Right. Oh, I don't know if we're on friend, friendly terms right now. Yeah. Um, I was just telling everyone how superior celsius is to fahrenheit um because uh, i was talking about how freaking hot it is here uh oh d says you kicked out the english from the u.s why keep their weird systems all well, the english are now on celsius so i guess the joke's on the americans how's your yeah, father says it's not superior if it's not american Oh, we don't do celsius that. we don't do kilos we don't do meters you do do kilos and you do do kilometers not like, really though like i don't do say grams like, as well 
No, so, yeah, I mean for weed, but <laughs> you know, like not outside of drugs. No one, you know, not no one says like give me like 10 grams of sugar. Well, no one why what, what would you do with 10 grams of sugar anyway? <laughs> sugar is obviously dealt out in spoons. I mean, that's just the uh no stones either. Yeah, my mother, old, she's old school. She, she says stone. She's like, oh, you know, you nine stone, whatever. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, woman? We're joined by uh, Belmont. You use metric for your guns too. Yeah. The whole military uses metric. He's got, and there's a yeah, lot of in people the in the military in the US. A lot. I'm a normie. Okay. Hmm. Us normies. Well, here's talking something feet. that's not normie. Uh, I like what you did. I like what you did with the place, Camel. You really uh, zhuzhed it up a bit. Oh, yeah. It's all up to date. I, I spent like Looking five right. hours on it today. <laughs> People don't know how long this stuff takes. It's oh, not... God. It was a nightmare. And I was doing it all day yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah. But it looks fantastic. Uh, wow. I mean, that really... It's like a whole new campaign. That yeah. Needs there. It really does, like... That's the prime real estate. That's your build right there. Yeah. And, Dan, uh, who? Like, I don't know. And Preston Acevedo, as far as. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. But it's, it, I also agree, like, fresh it up and uh, keep it going, man. Uh, you're at $43,000 dollary dues. Mm, yeah. 30,000 US dollars. America you at 40,000 yeah. US, but 30,000 is pretty phenomenal as it is. Um, so I, I went... built, uh, you know, that graphic with the shoebox stuff, which I wanted to do at jump, but I couldn't because I didn't have the quadriptic covers yet. And I didn't mm -hmm. have the black and white and, you know, like I'm actually finishing up that X stems cover. So there were a lot of things that weren't done. So, but it's yeah. great because now I have it and you really get an idea of what you're getting. So I think that'll help because before it was just like, like I had trouble remembering myself. So. Mm. Um, I got, uh, that. And then I, you know, I put these two, oh, I'm calling the 30 K specials up sort of, a. I dropped the price of the quadriptic quadriptic by five bucks. And originally I was going to do 85 and then it was going to go to one Oh five. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at 80 from now on. That's just the price. But what I am doing is I'm, I'm making it limited to only 40 copies. So that is going to be hopefully the incentive to get uh, yep. people interested in it. And then there's only going to be 20 of the hollow foil prints of the Preston Acevedo um, 11 by 17. So if you want that stuff, uh, because both of them and the um, standee are all limited, uh, you can't buy them as add-ons, which means you have to, you can't get them on the back end because there's only so many, you know, for supply. But the shipping on, for example, like the um, the quadriptic cover, it's uh, what it would normally be. But the if it was an add-on sale, I had dropped the shipping, so it's it's a wash. So it's essentially the same amount of money. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to see you've added it there. You've added it there. Uh, I also fantastic. took some. Have stuff you got down. the Have you got the print big on the campaign page anywhere else, or just here? Uh, no. Well, so if you go to the updates, you can see it. Oh uh, yeah. Of course, I did get that update today. There it is in all its glory. You Hop got uh, diggity damn. Yeah, and I put all the runners up. I put the second place for Shanth. Um. Yeah. So that all came out good. And what I did do is right now you can still get them as add-ons, issue zero and issues uh, zero through four with the original covers, but you can't get them anymore directly. So, you know, you had three months to get them. If you want them, you could get them in addition. But once the campaign goes into, you know, the faux demand, <laughs> you know, because we have to do it ourselves, <laughs> uh, it will be gone. Imaginary completely. demand imaginary demand yeah so um uh, as it is now essentially what'll what the way it'll be is the only ones you can get after a certain point will be the quadriptic cover and i think that's good because uh it'll interest people who haven't gotten it yet or want to get it again and then on top of that you know it i think it helps the fact that well 
the the other ones are officially first prints now. And if you missed that one, then you missed it. So, uh, D wants to know: Does that end up in the shoebox? I guess he's asking about the print. The the print is not in the shoebox. No, the not only in the stuff in the shoebox box are, yeah. are the books. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. So and, it's not it's not really a subscription tier. It's just the big, yeah. the big tier. Uh, Sumo asks, why does it say issue zero to six? I think I know the answer to this. It's because it's issue zero plus the first three issues of Boots and Heels. The other issues are Claude Agent. And there, so with issue, you've got issue, what is it? Where is it? Let me see this. I, I think I remember this. Uh, so you've got it's, issue you're wrong. one, I don't want you to keep going three, you're wrong. <laughs> and five. It says it right there. Okay. In yeah, Latin, no, that's that's incorrect. Why is it issue it, zero to six? Because there are six boots and heels issues. Well, seven, including issue zero. And phase two will have issues four, five, and six. And we'll oh, do that right. later this year. The phases. Yes, yeah. I totally forgot about the phases. Hey, Jasper, yeah. how are you going? Yeah, you're just going to add to this campaign, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, the because way now IBG there's no is point. being... Yeah. Right, right. There's so, no I, benefit. You may as well just yeah. grow your campaign bigger I'm just and bigger. Like do, yeah, so, you know, if this thing hits 100K, awesome. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. uh, the way I see it is if the campaign is the campaign, then, hey, then the whole thing is right there. And then I think that, you know, it's it's uh, good marketing down the road to be like, oh, look, this is the Boots and Heels campaign. You could have got all six, seven issues. And then when I do Claude Agent, that'll be its own thing on another, maybe even another platform. Um, now, I was sort of right in that it does go issue one, three, and five. It, and I'm it, assuming yeah. issue two is a Claude agent, and as is issue four, a Claude agent. Yes, yeah. But it's, they're not, it's, it's sort of right. The intertwining is just to make the... You think you're series. Tarantino over here. I get it. Yeah, get yeah. It. Like, you don't need to read it like that. It's not going to change. Uh, D says, is there any way to add that to my order already? I don't think they do that on Indiegogo. No, and the, unfortunately, the reason too that I have to sell the um, the prints separate is because it had they're eleven by seventeen, so it has to be mailed by itself in a flat eleven by seventeen box with a plastic top loader to make sure it doesn't bend. So that is just expensive. It's just what it costs. So that's why I'm only um, doing twenty of them because yeah. it's going to be expensive for me to ship them out. That's like me and the puzzles. It's it's all separate. You can't, yeah, like I'm really not making anything on them. I just wanted to offer something because I knew people were going to be interested in that cover, or that piece of art. Sumo, I don't, I don't think you get all seven um, of the books because when you do phase two, Camel, this is all going down and you're putting up all new stuff, yeah? That's how Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so phase two will have the first uh, – we'll have three issues, um, like, you, you know, like with the Boots and Heels title – I'll do three, uh, you know, like variants, whether me and Mike work on them together, I don't know yet. And then there'll be a um, uh, another Dan Lawless trade and there'll be a black and white. Uh, so that, that'll be the whole thing. Yeah. Actually, it won't be, like, I don't think it'll I don't be know Dan about Lawless Bancroft. Trade. I think he'll be the Preston slow. Estimator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow with his colors. I mean, Rob had the same complaint too. I'm like, I wish I could uh, be quicker, guys. <laughs> I saw also, Peter Gilmore bragging the other day that he has 12 hours a day to draw. And I was like, you mother. <laughs> I wish. I, well, it's tough too. I don't have anywhere like, near that. You know, Mike, you're, you're a graphic designer. So, you know, like this stuff takes time. It takes time to make it look good. You know, and like That's every crazy. time I do a little one of these panel boxes here for the, uh, for the tiers that takes yeah, you time. You do good ones too. Like, I like how you put the, the dollar amount in there. There's the, like, yeah, you could you get all of it in there, and it's all branded. Yeah, th this is like yeah, I, I get it, I get it. Oh, um, also, go down to yeah. the bottom. So I have some cool stuff. Very bottom. I got to tell. Yeah, pretty much like right to the bottom where it starts talking about the uh, the stretch goals. So I forgot, but yeah, we unlocked a stretch goal last night when we hit thirty k. Oh, nice. And so I talked with um, Peter Orchard. And he's agreed to let me use his triptych as the uh, the hollow foil triptych trading card set that we're going to give out. Oh, that, so everyone gets that who backs? Everyone who spent 100 bucks or more. Okay. 
because they, they're very expensive. It's going to cost me a lot of yeah. money to make those. Yeah, I was just I was about to them. say these like metallic. I've I've looked into metallic cards because I freaking love uh, the graveyard shift ones. And they're not even hollow foil, and they're yeah. I was like, yeah. all right, I won't be doing that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, it's like it's real easy to hit hundred dollars on the campaign, so I'm not trying to piss anyone off or anything. But it it just you know it it has to be cost effective. But uh, I talked with uh, Peter about it, and he was totally like excited about it. And I said, one caveat: I need you to go back and kind of uh, make the corrections that Mike and I suggested. And he did it in like ten minutes, and it looks it looks really really good. Oh, cool! Oh, excellent! Very nice. Uh, so, Jay yeah, Lee's in the house. Um, evening, Jay Lee. We're also joined by Michael Deitcher. Hello. Uh, I said hi to Jasper earlier. Actually, uh, Jay Lee. Oh, D. D he is man. He's the putting D, the D. through college. This guy, Hail D. And you know what, D? We give you one of these. You little ripper! <laughs> Thanks, lads. Uh, absolute legend. All right, let me scroll back up to the top there and register that. Hasn't come in yet. Oh, he got the print. Nice. Isn't that very cool? He wanted the print. I understand. I understand, D. Uh, we are also still uh, about 70 bucks away from unlocking a bookmark, a stretch goal on, uh, on my campaign as well. Uh, so, yeah, jump on there. I mean, 67 I know you, bucks away. You've probably, you guys are probably all back this, I understand. So I'm not going to. Not gonna shell much, but uh, it's time to get drawing. I reckon for this poly. Thank you very you much, D. Poly waffles in the states. Is that a thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Pretty much promise like you, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> a poly waffle. It's a kind of. Uh, uh, do you have Miffy muffins? Kind of... <laughs> what? Miffy muffins? I'm just making shit up now. You know? Uh, uh, yeah, Jay. Uh, Jay's uh, got the colors on his uh, Jimmy Reyes cover. I'll show that on a on a on a bigger stream because uh, it's really good. Uh, you know, when we've got like a hundred people in here and we're talking up, I don't know stuff. Uh, I want to show that off. Help, hopefully, get you some uh, signups, man. It's really good stuff. Uh, yeah, Polly Waff. Uh, what is it? A Polly. Is it now? Now I'm starting to doubt myself. Is it a poly woggle or a poly waffle? It's a, it's a chocolate bar, isn't it? Oh no, no, definitely not. It is. It is. Uh, no, I, I believe you. I just. It looks anything. good too. I seem to remember that I liked these. Hold on a sec. I was just about to say I'm going to start drawing, and then I start thinking about chocolate bars. Yeah, look at this thing. Oh, it looks terrific. Is that marshmallow poly waffle? Yeah. Oh, that, that's a giant poly waffle. It's it actually looks like this. Can you mail me one? I mean, I guess it wouldn't arrive very. If you need, if you want anything, get it from Australia. Get a violet crumble. That's what oh you yeah. Want. Ask ask um ask Phil Diaz about violet crumbles. It's like a <laughs> crunchy, but just like he buys them in the box. I'm not even joking. He buys them in bulk. Uh, it looks like a log of shite. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, I was laughing. Uh, it's log. It's log. Um, Can yeah. we no, do... It's, it's... Uh, oh, go ahead. No, you want Violet Crumble. It's, it's it's a crunchy, but it's it's a lot harder. Okay. And uh, I think it's a far superior. We call them chocolate uh, bars. I think you guys call them candies. On uh, Sergeant Murka there, yeah, uh, his helmet should be shiny, and his shield mm -hmm. and the emblem on his chest they should be like really, really, really shiny. Okay, cool. Yeah, no worries. No worries. We can do that. So is it still shiny green? He's just he's just polished his he's polished. Oh his yeah, yeah. Nice... He's just all night polishing that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing in there? 
I, I, Leave me alone. I understand. Did you see that? Did you see that tweet the other day? Where it was like men who don't men who ejaculate at least 21 times a month um, have a much lower risk of uh, prostate cancer. And my response to that was, those are rookie numbers. 20, 21 a month? You gotta, you gotta I mean, boost those numbers. Bro. What's that? That's like one every three or four, one every couple of days or something. I mean, what are you doing? Are you a man even? What if it's so like, I think, uh, I think I'm fine. 90 times a month. Is that <laughs> am I better? <laughs> yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It just, it was just reminding me of that fantastic scene from Wolf of Wall Street where it's like, those are rookie numbers. You got to get, you got to get that up twice a day, five times a day, even. Yeah. Uh, five times a day by the end of it, you just, it's like <laughs> dust shooting out. <laughs> like, um, Remember that scene in, uh, oh God, what is it? I think it's in Hot Shots, maybe Hot Shots 2, where he's getting like a blood transfusion and he's like just, a, he's sucked into, the, <laughs> they take all the blood out of him and he's just it. like a, uh, like a blow up doll who's been deflated. <laughs> I can't remember Hot Shots oh, yeah, 2, that's unfortunately. So at the moment, I'm just sort of laying down the kind of... This is more like the values. Uh, like, I like I like to keep the... Like, get some nice soft edges and stuff um, within the cuts. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. It's so weird how we do this, like... You and I have totally different styles, but we kind of achieve, yeah. like, the same look. Yeah. There's well, there's many there's many different ways to uh, skin the cat, so to speak, of light in coloring. But uh, yeah, what works works. So stick with that. I say. You want to know something? Funny? Um. Yeah. Shoot. I have been doing Photoshop now since. Uh, Oh gosh, ninety eight maybe ninety seven. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so about twenty five years. Yeah. Uh, you know, been working on it, done full comics, done movie posters, DVD cover, like you know, you name it. I still have no idea, nor want to know how to use masks. <laughs> I have no idea how to use them. I don't know what I'm doing with them. I'm like, well, whatever. I'll just make another layer. Once you go mask, you never go back. I just can't uh, figure like, it out. Look I'm at just these things. Why I do it? Look at it. Yeah, Isn't I don't that get cool? it. I mean, I, I guess that's uh, <laughs> not an even close. I just don't. I think <laughs> they've never taught. These are how all to the masks them. I'm using. Yeah. That's uh that's a mask for the crocodile effect. Yeah, see that's that's I would just do another layer. I would just like here's a layer. You and... see the problem when you do another layer is especially if you're using transparencies and opacities that are not full 100% is when you want to go and adjust them later. So like when I do something, I just go, I just jump in. I'm not really I don't pause to see oh, is it the right color, is it the right tone? I can adjust all of that later super easily because I'm working in masks and I can go back and I can, you could put masks on top of masks, uh, which is really helpful for stuff like these glowing things where you want the glow. See like this glow under here. Mm -hmm. I wanted the glow, but I didn't want it to be on top of the, like that's all masked out. Uh, a lot See, of the, if all of the, if it all was the me, I would just do a light layer underneath the gray underneath his gun hmm. mask it up bro that's uh that's my suggestion to you but i um, i don't yeah okay i don't see how there's a difference though it's about non-destructibility 
so the mask is the mask is um doesn't affect anything it's on its own plane yeah so mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if i can really maybe i can actually if i show you just this this highlight layer and oh, i take wow. the mask off these are the like fun funky color highlights that i've put onto their highlights um and i can i mean apart from these ones that i've just sort of you know brushed in which is like a bit lazy of me but normally i don't do that you know i can go in and i can change these colors i can change how light they are dark that really easily i can make sure that this light is the same as that whatever you know um so Sumo says he doesn't care to know Bangrof. All right, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm, I just, it's. I'm trying, it's I'm trying to sell you on the mask. See, I just, I just don't, I don't. I'm trying to think of like a, a good analogy, because it's like I'm able to achieve what I want without doing it. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. I guess it works, but I, you know, it hasn't. I've never felt like, man, if only I knew how to do something like this, and I could use a mask and figure it out. Like I've always been able to figure it out. So. Basically, anything I do now that is not line art involves a mask. Yeah. Virtually everything. Uh, it's just it's just my workflow now. Um, can't live can't live without it. Really. Well, I'll say this uh, too: it's like people who use masks love them, and I've known yeah. people who don't use them, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, I don't need that." I'm like, "Oh okay." Um. The thing about Photoshop as well is you can use it for 20 years. You can use it for your profession and not use almost all of it ever. Oh, yeah, you for know, sure. It's, it, it's so powerful. It can do so many things. Every now and then, I'll just get recommended a new Photoshop tutorial thing. And, um, you know, I'll go in and watch it. Today, I was learning about using the new AI tools in Photoshop. And they're insane. I mean, forget about it, right? Like, if you think people aren't going to be using AI tools, you're dreaming. They are so powerful. And I'm just I'm just watching this thing thinking, like, how can I use this? Like, what in what way can I implement any of this into my workflow to speed things up? Because it's like, like, you can take a really ratty, artifact riddled jpeg and um and just clean it like just press a button and it all of a sudden it's a good jpeg like it's it's a perfectly printable oh, wow. image now it's nuts and i don't know how like that's one example of you know what it can do but i don't know how, like how i'd be able to use that in making comic stuff but um i don't know maybe like you could do some cool background effects really quickly and easy. I don't know. Um, whatever it is, but I remember once back in the early two thousands, my mom, she needed to like, they were selling our house. And so there was a picture, there was a tree in front of the house and she's like, "Will, can you get rid of the tree for me? And I was like, I guess so I got rid of the tree and you know I deleted it and she's like you know okay well why did you replace it with checkers <laughs> I said <laughs> I said I didn't and she goes well where's the house I was like you yeah <laughs> it doesn't exist <laughs> this is a photo it's not it's like a <laughs> it's like right yeah but like you wanted, why can't you just that? magically see behind what was that there, was I originally. well I had to like explain it like in in reality like imagine you have a how, photo how and this you stuff cut, actually works yeah yeah you cut something out I was like there's not like some type of you know omnipresent 3D interpretation <laughs> like algorithm thing going on like no it's not yeah that, that was a nice 45 minute conversation well, it does sort of like if you didn't know how it works, it does kind of seem a bit like wizardry. I'll I'll give her that. You know, there's 
Like, yeah, if people I mean, don't yeah, for the know early this, if you don't have, if you know, I mean, just basic stuff, like if you don't have some sky in your image, even if there's clouds in there, you can literally just take your thing and just content aware fill sky in there and it'll fill it in. Uh, like, if people don't know that, then yeah, I guess they're like, oh wow, that, that does that. Yeah, I mean, it does so much. And people know about, you know, like getting pimples and blemishes off people's skin, how easy that is. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Here's a... I like, do you, uh, here's a question. Do you do uh, action scripts? You do like scripts, actions, and stuff like that. Use that ever use it a couple times. Uh, I have a look that I have like kind of it's a custom look that I've built, and it's um, you'll see it in I didn't use it in uh, Hail Salad, but you'll see it on every page in Boots and Heels. And it's to kind of make it look almost like a like a cartoon, like I took screen caps of a TV, and uh, yeah. that took a long time to kind of figure out like what to use and how to use like you know certain steps. Uh, so yeah, I build action scripts for that because mm -hmm. that was something that, you know, if I was to do it manually every time, it would just, you know, just be a massive waste of time. So yeah, they're freaking, they're really powerful. If you can get them to work, you know, if you're doing, if you do basically, if you do anything more than once, you should uh, yeah. at least stop at some point and ask, can I turn this into an action? Uh, yeah, I've used action scripts. Um, I'm trying to think of this, like, uh, someone in the chat was like, what did they say? Let's layers versus, I was layers versus masks. Mass. Yeah. And I guess they're uh, just a layer person, you know, both. Obviously. Is it uh is it cold over there at the moment? Uh yeah, it's been okay. Um you know, it's like it doesn't really get super cold here, but and it's been in the Yeah, of course. The fifties and sixties, you heaven. know, but I mean that's you know not typical. I um I had an idea today and I don't know if it's feasible at all. Uh I started looking into it cost wise. I asked around a few people, you know, in CG and DMs and stuff who I think might have done it before. I was thinking about hardcovers. Having because you know, like I don't really do you know variants and stuff but i'm i'm not against variants if it's a different edition obviously uh -huh. obviously because i'm just doing one so i thought if i did an edition that's like a hardcover in a like a proper european bund sna size or something i would definitely consider a variant because I'm, I'm like because i'm looking at all these people with these really you know massive campaigns and obviously uh you know they they have multiple offerings on you're you're one of them you know like you you offer lots of uh variants and stuff because otherwise it's just it's really hard to kind of get that average order value up uh, right because a lot of people are not interested in all the other stuff you know, merch or whatever it is Yeah, the uh, man, you're entering a whole different ball game with with hardcovers. It's like um, everything. Yeah, I I've never been able to find a good place to do hardcovers. Doesn't mean they don't exist, but I've also like haven't seriously looked because 
I've always felt like, well, I'll, I'll get to that when I'm at the point of, you know, volumizing a collected edition of either boots and heels or hail salad. And I'm not at that point yet. So it hasn't made a huge difference to me, but I mean, eventually I am going to want to. So it's worth looking well, that's into. what I thought as well. I thought, you know, you know, down the track, or, you know, I'm thinking people have their thing with their campaigns. Your thing is these like crazy, colorful, vibrant cardstock hollow foil covers. That's your thing. Ethan has the chromiums. Um, uh, and I've always said that my thing is I'm sort of more, even the way the story is written and everything, it's more European like influenced than well, I don't think people comic. disagree. That's for sure. I mean, it's definitely yeah. pretty obvious. Yeah, exactly. So why not do that? Why not lean into that? and do an actual bun dessiné. The problem is, uh, and Fowler uh, brings it up, he is mixing for the Psycho 66 hardcover, which I have sitting around here somewhere, which I was very impressed by. That Did you have to request that size, Matt? Because I don't think they offer that size anymore. Is that like a special request? Um, so there's... Wait... They, they don't offer the Bundesina size, which is quite large. And that's what I would want to do. If I want to do a hardcover, because people don't know, when you get these French books, it's like a punch in the face. There's something about that scale that just hits you. It's like the difference between watching on a VMAX or an IMAX versus just a little tiny cinema or something. Right. It really does have impact. So... The problem is Mixum, uh, which, you know, I've gotten some stuff recently, some tests from Mixum, like, which was immaculate printing. Um, and, uh, th yeah, like, they don't offer that size. Uh, all right, Adam hooked up with a rep and did the oversized stuff custom. All right, well, I'll, I'll, re I'll reach out to them and see what, what they can do. The issue with Mixum is... Um, for hardcover stuff, they are quite expensive. So I don't know what the price point on these things would be. They might just have to be, you know, much more expensive. I know um, Eric Canetti on Arc Athena had a 64-page hardcover for 25 bucks. There's just oh. no way in hell that if I went with Mixum, I could even approach that. Uh, now, you can go through China. Uh, there's amazing printers over in China. Uh, some would say the best printers in the world. Probably are. Um, but they have high minimums. You know, like it's oh, a sure. thousand minimum. So I don't know if I can. <laughs> yeah, a thousand is. You, a know, lot. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is a thousand. A thousand really is not a lot. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, right? But if you consider what like most people would need to like, you know, printing like like Barnes and Noble or something, it's like, well, you're gonna have like forty, fifty thousand minimum. So Well, you, you know, think like, that, but I don't know if they do. I think I think the people like publishing companies, because we, we found out what what like books actually sell. It's not that much. I think those bigger publishing companies have deals with printers where they're like, Are we gonna put, you know, hundred thousand books through you a month so you know enjoy like give us the good prices um but the actual individual unit numbers yeah we, we're really it's really tough for us we we cannot compete uh we can't be competitive on a monetary scale against published big publishing companies the numbers that we're doing i know it it really doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things but for you know guys like us a thousand well, us, it's, covers yeah is it's a disaster like um one of the stretch goals on the campaign at one point well so it was initially it was going to be the triptych the hollow foil card set and then i changed mm -hmm. that and i was like oh you know what would be cool is i'll do customized 3d glasses because people get in the 3d book 
And I was like, you know, if I have a minimum order of 100, that's fine. We don't need to sell 100 books, but I'll have them for, you know, if I want to do reprints or whatever. Well, the the minimum order was on a lot of sites was 5,000. And then on Alibaba, it was 1,000. I was like, I don't yeah. need 1,000 3D glasses. <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do with those? <laughs> Like, yeah, the yeah, minimum yeah, order on these things was a thousand as well. Yeah, on these magnets. So that's why people don't do them. Uh, like that, I only did them because I got so many backers, and I wanted to like send out a stupid thank you to everyone. Um, but even then, it wasn't cheap. It's probably a bit stupid to do, but I wanted to because I don't know. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fowler says iconic did hard covers through doug t's printer in tennessee they specialize in yearbooks but the pre-press connect oh that's died of COVID. that sucks um simply green likes to stand these cool idea uh only scratch the surface of what's possible there simply green have you seen camel's new standees uh do you want to show that off camel that's available oh, now i have it on I can go get um, it. yeah, yeah i think you should i think it's better to see it yeah okay one um, second in the flesh rather than just on the page uh talk about scratching the surface but i agree like a lot of people don't a lot of people don't care for the merch um but i mean just look at ethan just sold okay. forty thousand dollars worth of hats this is not nothing like there are people out there um that really want that stuff and they, they yeah. like if you give them something cool if you offer something interesting and unique uh yeah, they will come out and, and pay for it. I mean, yeah, like, look at that. <laughs> so that is available right now. There's uh, 15 left, I think. Yeah, we sold five in one day. There's only going to be yeah, 20. This is crazy. And this uh, comes off. You can really see the, the hollow foil in it. But then you can reverse it. And this was the original cover I drew for the first ep issue, like 15 years, 10 years ago, whenever it was. And if you want, you can put it like that. And you can make that the background. Um, I don't know if I have. Oh, you know. Yeah, I mean, imagine you could fill, if you had the money, you could fill your shelf with all this cool stuff that we're doing here. I don't have that kind of money, so I've got to use my old toys from 30 years ago. But uh, he walks. We're dispelling the myth again. What have you got there? You can also make it a uh comic book stand look at that thinking of everything yeah, yeah. That, that looks so cool imagine that on a shelf so you could put your boots and heels here as like you know you could even yeah so that would be a, like a nice way to stand your display whatever you have so Here's a cool idea for the future. The plastic coating probably increases the price, but I think of the old days. So you get a character in the back of each issue kind of thing, and then you can switch the characters around and backgrounds and props to make scenes. I mean, that that, it, that, that sort of thing is like we're talking numbers way bigger than what we're doing, but who knows for the future? You're right. Like we're only just scratching the surface on what's possible here. And the cool thing is all this stuff that we're doing – you couldn't do this 10 years ago. It just didn't. Oh, exist. yeah. You could barely do it five. Yeah. Because I remember, and I was printing a zine 10 years ago, and it was it was like pulling teeth just getting a, a like a little A5 zine printed, let no, alone tchotchkes and stuff. 10 years ago, if I recall, one of the only places you could go to get a custom comic book printed was Indie Planet. I don't know if you guys have heard of Indie Planet, but I remember Indie Planet. Yeah, yeah, They're that was pretty much up. it. I mean, and then it was like you see, you had people doing that, but then it was also like, oh, well, you want to get in Comicsology? Well, Comicsology just turned out to be the biggest fucking joke in the world because it's not even around anymore. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, isn't that like digital now? Or it closed down, didn't it? Yeah, well, it got bought by Amazon, and then Amazon just saw it as sort of like. It wasn't even a lost leader. It was just, you know, it was just taking up space. And they're like, all right, let's get rid of this thing. But yeah, if you guys want the standees, get them now. Because, yeah, there's only 15 left. I'm not going to remake them. 
they are really, really nice, especially if you guys got any of the uh, hail salad standees, like really good quality. And uh, it's a really, really nice display. My wife saw it. She was like, oh, that's actually like professional looking. <laughs> I was like, thanks, that's babe. Good. I thought you would just like yeah. kind of a, you you're know. not a hack like I thought you were, babe. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> and I was like, all right. She goes, oh, I know how that came off. I was like, do you? <laughs> okay. Women don't know how their words I know, I know. impact us. It was like, literally, them. I work 80 hours a week <laughs> on fucking comics gate shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one looks professional. Oh, thank you. Uh, ba -ba -ba. What, were we, what were we just talking about? I can't even remember. I felt like we were talking. Oh, yeah, the hardcovers. Yeah. So it's either you go to China and print a thousand, which. Yeah, cool. You get a much lower. Obviously, you get a much lower um, per unit rate, but it's uh, like I don't know. I don't even want to know what the overall cost would be. Um, and then you got to somehow. Then you got to somehow house them like the overprint and sell them eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, or you go through a site like Mixum. You get something a lot closer to what you sold, but you got to uh you got to really kind of charge a lot for them which might be fine i don't know i guess you like you're gonna sell less but you're charging more sort of thing i, I don't know if there's any way around that i don't think there is no but i mean this is the age-old issue with any type yeah. of you know uh product ordering so it's like it's not it's not like unique to us or or independent crowdfunding comic books or anything but you know I like i know if i do it i'm gonna get people saying wow wow who would spend that kind of money on like i can get i can get a hardcover book at uh barnes and noble for um oh god i'm so tired of that Hey, you know what? I I don't want to wait six months or a year for a book. I can go to Barnes and Noble right now. Then go. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. What the fucking holding your feet to the fire, bro? Like, uh, go ahead. What, what do you do? You have fifty dollars a year to spend on books. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't. I'm not. I'm not yeah. spending your money for you. But you know you I do think. What's what? That? You can't go get. A, Are you a saying? Yeah, no. I was gonna say you can't go get a kick-ass glittery standee. Can't find that anywhere. Yeah, that's not in Barnes and Noble. Um, I yeah, I I really want to do it. I think I want to do it. Like I, it it fits with the thing. Um, you know, I I, I go on about. Bandesine in this format and everything, uh, even though it'll probably be a pretty expensive item. Uh, the good thing about a site like Mixum is they do really good quality printing for low, uh, you know, low minimums. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, even if you're never gonna get, you're never gonna get caught out essentially. Um, if you do it that way, uh, I just, yeah, like I'd love the, I love the idea of having something like that in my hand, like that big, big, uh, hardcover edition. I think that's like every artist dream, right? There's like, it's kind of romantic to think that when I'm long gone, this thing is. I put all this work into is going to be on a shelf. That uh, was my original idea. Like that was my, like, why, why do you feel compelled to tell, to write a book or like whatever it was? And my original thing was, I just, I love the idea of it sitting on a shelf 
and me thinking, collecting dust for no I one to read that. for hundreds of years. Well, I mean, I'm talking about when you're just starting out. You know, it all seems so pie in the sky when you're just starting out. It's like you have very small dreams, and then they kind of grow. Your expectations grow as your um, influence does, I suppose. Uh, so, in, uh, oh, how many books in this arc, Bancroft? Uh, I've got in this main story. Um, at, at the moment, it's six. I would love to somehow be able to compress that. I don't know how, but, uh, you know, with comics, I think you should be trying to go shorter rather than longer. Like, when, and when I say that, I don't mean like rushing through anything. It's purely just, you know, if there are, if they're like when I started, it was probably, you know, seven or eight. And then you'd realize, you know, you don't need all this stuff that you've put into it. Essentially. Um, you can, you can compress things. You can, you can be a better writer. Uh, like I like to listen to writing videos every now and then, you know, any pro writer will always tell you like, get this, like, get the, get the story down to the bone just what needs to be there and make it concise and good and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's down to six. Uh, last time I did a sort of reorder of Ooh. how, how the, how the actual books are going to, going to go. Uh, but in the meantime, there'll be like lots of little side books along the way. You know, th this thing that the timeline we're working with is, you know, from ancient history to, uh, to now. So, uh, would the larger size be a version two, uh, a recut of the first six books? No, I'm talking about like releasing, like doing these would be essentially, you know, everyone does variants, you know, like get the, well, there's, there's variants on the, uh, boots and heels campaign. There's, there's variants on every campaign except mine. I've always been always because I came to this, you know, through European stuff and I don't remember seeing many variants there. I don't think they really do them. I was just as like, um, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. I don't, I can never explain it. And everyone would say, you know, you're leaving so much money on the table by not offering a variant. I'm like, I understand that, but I got to go with my gut with what I'm doing. Otherwise, yeah, it just, it just won't feel right for me. Now, having said that, if it's a, this is the hardcover variant, um, I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, so it would probably be a different sort of look in the hardcover, you know, maybe a, a different kind of art. I don't know. Uh, again, I just sort of came up with this idea today. Um, just brainstorming ways I can sort of offer more on the campaign. Uh, yeah, as long as it doesn't become this, like, you know rapacious business practice of like <laughs> like uh, like i got accused of that and and hail salad i think there were seven covers and i i just was like really into drawing the covers i mean of the mm -hmm. seven only what two of them were from other artists i did five of them um and technically i colored the sixth one so it's uh and, and so people thought with Boots and Heels, like, oh, there's going to be a thousand covers. And there really aren't. Every version has two covers. There's just because there's four issues, you know, it gave me a chance to do lots of yeah. different covers. But really, it's just there's only only two. two. I mean, like the Dan Lawless cover is for the trade. Well, there's no other trade. Uh, you know, there's a black and white. So I did a black and white cover. And then there was the four main covers, and that was pretty much it, except for the ones we just released. So, um, yeah. Well, and as well, I don't, I don't view um, variants in this space in crowdfunding to be rapacious, if we're going to use that word, because it really is a take it or leave it situation almost always. There's a few guys who do like put them into higher tiers. Uh, like, you know, if you want to get the this cover, you've got to get all three or something. Um, and, you know, some people like that. Some people don't like it. Uh, 
I don't necessarily like again. It's it's still it's still take it or leave it. The whole thing with the variants that people were always against was forcing um, forcing uh, you know stores to buy variants. Mm, right, right. Um, yeah, and and that would be like yeah, that that's exactly. the real money grubbing. Like I never did anything yeah. like that. Where it's like, no. well, if you want, if you spend two hundred dollars, you unlock this. No, there's nothing like that. It's just, it's there if you want it. Yeah, exactly. So that, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm happy to do some more variants. Uh, but I, yeah, for me, I don't just want it to be the same kind of book. That's just me. Other people do it their way. Uh, for me, I want it to be a different kind of book. So it would be the hardcover book. It would obviously have to be more expensive. Uh, you know, we went through why that is, um, and uh, but it would be bigger. Like it would be, again. Where? Hang on a sec. Let me show you guys. Uh, you don't want to tell people how to run their business? Oh, that's a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a comment. Uh, here we go. Battle Brick Road. So. Solo layout. That's that's the size difference. Let me see. This is a normal European Bundesne. Oh yeah, yeah, it's huge. That's a big difference. So when you open these things up, it really is a it's a whole different reading experience. Now I wouldn't reformat it. They usually what happens usually in Europeans is they fit a lot more panels per page because they're so big. Yeah. I wouldn't do that um but luckily my art is i do it i'd make it quite large anyway so you know there wouldn't be any quality loss uh, let me ask you is there like a, a, a anti was well, there is there like a woke com comic movement in european stuff like is there like no. anti-cg or they don't give a shit no no they're like japan in a healthy industry I just removed myself from stream in a healthy industry there's no uh there's no like people are trying to make money now i'm sure that Ooh. there's woke stuff going on but i it's yeah. just like i remember i remember someone talking about um when i was back in web comics and someone brought up like do, should we have a, something like CG happening in web comics? I was like, you don't need to because everyone is catered for. Everyone just does their own thing. Uh, unless it's like, and maybe this has changed in the last five years since I got out of it. Unless it's like you can't get featured or promoted unless you're, um, you know, representing pre some kind of woke story. Maybe that is the case. But I mean, the, the difference is in that space, like woke stories do really well because there are pe people who actually want to read that over there. Mm -hmm. And that's that's always been a crux of the argument. It's like this stuff doesn't sell. It's not making any money. It, sh it shouldn't exist. And the only reason it does exist is because people are willing to put ideology in front of business. Uh, if there's an audience for this stuff, by all means, go and cater to them. Uh, but don't like throw away and piss off the existing audience to go and chase a phantom audience that doesn't even exist um well, so yeah good, I, I just uh... don't think it's like in manga as well it's like anytime they try and get their their little their their claws in they just get swatted away because it's just like what are you doing here it's good to know that you know if if you're interested so you're so inclined that you can you know, like go possibly print your book in another country uh, versus having to work with, you know, whatever the options are locally in the States. Cause like, you know, I mean, and we've talked about this before you and I are not making enough to live off of our books. Now that'd be great, no. but essentially what's happening is CG is, um, funding us enough to make the books um, and not, you know, 
go completely bankrupt doing it. But the real payday won't be until the books are done and then we're able to like shop them and, you know, print them off, um, you know, in like a full, fully volumized edition or whatever it is. But uh, it would be nice to be able to have a publisher do that, you know, and get it in bookstores because, you know, obviously self-publishing from bookstores is kind of a nightmare. Yeah, I don't even know if that's even a thing. I have never heard Maybe of it. it yeah. No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Felix says, so that's why Mo is near. You're talking about manga. I think I think Mo is near because we're cutting into his uh, 80s made time. So that's, that's fair enough. Uh, we don't normally... It's not always doing a draw stream at this time. But uh, yeah, I wonder what that number is. Like... I, it's obviously different for everyone depending on where you live. If you live in Brazil or the Philippines, you can make a living off being an artist and stuff. Um, I don't well, know. Like Melbourne just became one of the most uh, one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. It's more expensive than New York. It's more expensive than London. It's more expensive than Paris. Uh, all these places, Hong Kong. So it is really bad here. I like, I do, but, and I, and I just wonder in general, like, what is the, like, how much do you have to be making on a book? And how often do you have to be um, making books to be able to be making a living doing this? I wonder. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, you know, Pedro Aang, uh, you know, when I paid him for that trailer, he's like, dude, you don't even know how far that goes down here <laughs> in, in Panama, you know? He's and in I was, Panama? I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, I think so. I hope I'm not. Mis yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's where he is. But, but still, he's just like, you know, it's South America. It's like that, that dollar goes a lot further. And I was like, I shouldn't have paid you as much. <laughs> I'll pay you half as much next time. <laughs> Mo was here and he says, I saw anime talk, so I left. Now I'm back and Bancroft is on a boring subject. <laughs> what do you want us to talk about? I think it's an interesting subject. I wonder how many people are actually like making a living making comics in the indies. I can't imagine it would be very many. So I'm not even, I'm not even, this is how rare it is. I'm not even planning for that to be uh, a real goal. For me, I'm looking at like grow the YouTube to pay for, you know, life stuff. And then, and then, you know, the comics is sort of like what it's all about. But it is, I mean, you got to be made, you got to really be, you got to be making serious bucks. And then you've also, I think you've got to be the artist. Cause I didn't, I didn't see how you can make money paying other artists to do this stuff. The, the cost to make comics is just astronomical. Unless you, unless you're making 3.7 million. That's about, I think many of us could be doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Simply Green agrees. Yeah. On comics alone, probably relatively few. Add some merch, super chats. That's it. Like super chats, merch. Exactly. That's like, that's what you really got to have as well. Otherwise, it's, I mean, even like guys who are super, you know, you think they're super successful in the space. They're, they still have day jobs. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to me, I guess. And I, I'm going to sound surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be. I don't know. But just how many people there are that are interested in indie comics. Like, I, that sounds, you know, like almost like an insult. It's not supposed to be. I'm just like, you know, maybe it's 
because when you when you go indie, you're gonna lose the kind of polish that you're gonna see in the mainstream. Um, you know, because you have 15 people working on a book. Um, mm -hmm. so you really have to be interested in like whether it's the creator or whatever. You know, CG has the added benefit of being a bit of a movement as well. But like, you know, let's say that aspect kind of dried up and it was, you know, the culture war wasn't as important. And, you know, to some degree, like you don't want the only reason to be, people are purchasing your stuff is because they're fighting a culture war. Like you want them to like what you're doing. Right. So. Well, eventually it dries up. Uh, yeah. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, you know, you want to have a little bit more of a, uh, you know, you want to be able to like hold up to time and make whatever you're making like interesting. Um, but like, yeah, it's just there's a whole community out there of guys who are like, yeah, I just genuinely am interested in indie stuff. And uh, that's that's cool. There's stuff here, you, there's stuff here that like the mainstream just wouldn't touch, you know. So they're not gonna make that. the comic skaters versus the X Men, <laughs> that's not a thing, <laughs> okay. Amazingly, not, I don't think so, anyway. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, and I mean, a lot of cool stuff is always gonna come out of the indies, that's just well, yeah, like if you ever hear the story is. of like. Eastman and Liard when they were trying to pitch Ninja yeah. Turtles, like everyone fucking was like, get out of here. Go kick rocks, you know? Even George Lucas, you know how many you know, meetings he had to try to pitch Star Wars and everyone was like, just leave. Just get the fuck out. Go home. So. And then someone does no, it and then everyone is like, oh, we need a Star Wars. And then they have like all these rip-off versions that come out. Uh, awesome one says, I heard a great podcast about how YA comic authors who are making less money than a school teacher, and that was one comic in a five year period. They said, Dogman ruined it for your comics. Well, I mean, I guess the goal is to make a dogman. Yeah. I know dog that's, man? you know, oh, it's some massive, you know, no. friggin' thing that so sells a gazillion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's for kids. It's for kids. Oh, okay. It's not fast. Also, Dog Man? Really? That's what we're doing now? How fucking boring <laughs> is that? That's like what like, a nine-year-old comes up with. This is like Dog Man. Like, all right. Great. Uh, Eric says, I'm going to do a rip-off version of The Lucent. Good luck. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> Call the Matrix. Luck. The Lucent is a weird story. It, it just is on purpose. I always wanted it to be. That's what that's what um, keeps it around, though. You know, if it's not weird, then it's not worth doing. I feel. Yeah, like I remember reading, um, what's that book? The Preacher. I was thinking Reacher. <laughs> I, read I didn't read Reacher. Yeah. Uh, Preacher was weird, and I don't, I'm not like a massive fan of it. Actually, I don't even really remember a lot of it. But what I do remember is thinking, This is weird. Uh, this sort of story I felt at the time, I don't know if they made a new like a TV adaptation, I feel like they did. Um, like I remember thinking at the time, like they wouldn't make a TV show of this, but I think they ended up doing that, so I guess I was an idiot. Um, but I liked that. I like, yeah, like should be a bit weird. That's what comics should be. Um, what do you guys hear in the chat saying? Simply Green says a lot of talent here should have been in the mainstream, but the mainstream comics are a barren of we uh, a barren, and we offer fertile ground. I mean, just look at the artists alone. Uh, it's getting crazy and crazy every year. But who has the talent, asked Mo Biggs, to draw at Dogman level and come up with such a unique idea as Dogman? It is true. It is very original. Dogman. <laughs> and his nemesis, Cat Dude. Cat, cat Girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Bat Chick. 
Uh, if you want a trip, watch Mind Game. Preacher show was interesting. Yeah, I suppose I should check it out. I just I didn't really if I don't hear people talking about a show, I just don't kind of bother, you know. I don't yeah. Know. Maybe that's wrong of me. Dog panic versus cat woman. Hot <laughs> oh, oh, new show. Oh, cat woman. Huh, that's a good one. I don't remember that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was thinking, you know, because we had that we had that contest last night. I was like, man, we really had a lot of good entries. Yeah. Like, there, there were some entries in there. I was like, these, these are, I mean, this was the only one, it, you know. It would have been great, but we had, there were so many. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a good problem to have, but, like, you know, I genuinely feel bad. I was like. We had four or three runners up, and I was like, but they were all good. I mean, like, Vons was great. Odin's was great. You know, oh, there were Dan Lawless well, won until he didn't. Up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There were others as well, like uh, Alan Alonzo's. That one was um, really good, too, yeah. Peter Orchard, yeah, that was like, there's some really good stuff in there. I gotta uh, see if I can use Allen's for something for anything because it it is it is good. Mo just said he googled Dogman. There is a book called Dogman: A Tale of Two Kitties, which is Ooh. apparently the title of a shitty a shitty Garfield sequel. I didn't even know there was a Garfield sequel. Um. Oh, Dogman's enemy is Cat something like Doctor Cat. Oh, I mean, you know, look. Good one, guys. <laughs> well done, I guess. You know, I really am like half as slow or more, like less working on a stream. I do understand why people are like, they don't want to work on the stream. It's yeah. I'm I am like I've realized that I am not a multitasker. Uh I, I realize that through streaming. Like my brain just like I, I lose twenty IQ points and I need that IQ for the coloring for the drawing. <laughs> I I can do fine. It's not an issue drawing or coloring, but I can't be hosting. If I'm hosting, yeah. forget it. But if I'm like this, I'm like I'm working just as fast as I normally would. Mo says Dingo Man with Ginger Root art quality would be the most popular YA book in Australia, dude. I pulled out the Ginger Root hand the other day. Why did I? Oh, was that yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah, my stream because we were looking at oh my one of some God. dudes. Robust, his hand was like this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I seen that. I forgot what this looked like. I mean that is that is special to draw that and go. Yep, that looks good. That's a hand. I did it. <laughs> well done, me. <laughs> like that's like your that's like your dad patting you on the head, saying, "Yeah, it's really good. Let's put that on the fridge." I mean that is <laughs> put it on the put it like, in the fire. I actually, I didn't because I you know I was just looking at the ginger root magnet for so long. You know, I didn't mean to do this, but I guess I just did. Is I made this look better than the actual original drawing. You know, I cleaned it up and yeah, like that looks more like a hand than the actual original art. <laughs> Is it a rake? <laughs> oh my god! But that—that's so like that's that's funny. You know, like when you think back, what you were kind of up to. Um, yeah. It was your art. I mean, holy cow. 
uh some person is that lieutenant america no it's sergeant murica and that's an adult mutant hapkido gator no that's comics gator obviously uh is that is that guy on the motorcycle the gunisher no it's time puncher i like all of these names obviously <laughs> they are pretty good the gunisher <laughs> He doesn't have a he doesn't have a skull on his chest. Yeah. He's got a fist, but it's a white fist on a black shirt. So and who's that behind him? Is that Zordo? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here's a uh, bleepy bloop. Here's Beep Bop. In Beep honor Bop of Zordo. Uh, yeah, in no, honor Zordo, of Zordo. Um... I mean, for the Zoro looking guy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just yeah coming up with new ones. This is uh, LSD girl. <laughs> This is Rob Arnold, twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, you know, like every wishes. character had their twenty ninety nine version in Marvel. <laughs> this is Rob Arnold. He's got the he's got the he's got the opposite Rob Hawk. Here. Oh yeah. Well, the the Rob Hawk could come through it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he's trying, but it's not working for some yeah. reason. He got radioactively enhanced everywhere except his Rob Hawk and his genitals. Carmen San Diego. There she is. <laughs> Victoria was playing that the other day. The original. What, like uh, on a DOS system? Well, just through an emulator. But uh, oh, yeah, oh, the yeah, same, course, that yeah. same old game. Yeah. Uh, it's still a good game. I don't know what heels would be. You know, I've, I've always been able to like equate characters with certain characters you know because a million people mm -hmm. have been doing this boots and heels have been real hard i mean cloak and dagger maybe a little bit but like the characters and personalities aren't really even close so mm -hmm. i mean it's just like i don't i don't know I, I i just i've always maintained that they're their own thing The Gay Blade is a real movie, says Awesome One. Yeah, it came out in the early 80s, right? With uh, George Hamilton. What is, what is it? Gay Blade? It's, it was like a Zorro parody. You know, they used to make these movies back then where they put way too much effort into, like, a spoof. <laughs> you know, like, why would you spend this much time on this? But they did it. Courtney's Fellowship of Oddballs has joined us. She says, hi, Bancroft. Hi, Camel Moon. Hello, Courtney. Great to have you here. Hello there. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome to the show. How many people watching? So I've gotten um, halfway through the two towers. I, where are these towers? Oh, yeah. yeah. I have no idea. There's no towers. I never heard of it. It's just... <laughs> okay. So for everyone in the chat who isn't aware, Camel thought that for how long has it been now? 20 years. He's thought that the Lord of the Rings insisted upon itself. He didn't care for it. <laughs> I thought they were terrible. Eventually. I thought they were dumb movies. And then I, yeah, I yeah. Was like... He was just thought, oh, this is all just hype. This is all just <laughs> like, oh, it's so old. So it's all hype. And recently, he went back and watched it. And what did you say to me? You were like, this is like the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I watched. Well, so like, let me preface. Let me tell you how it started. I'm playing this game for PS5 called Dark Alliance. 
and it's a Dungeons and Dragons game. But it's it's not. I mean, it's like a it's like a third person action y, you know, it's like Diablo, but it's third person. And so, you know, I'm I'm liking it. I know it got bad reviews. I don't care. I I like it. I think it's fun. And but I, you know, I don't know anything about these characters. I, I picked it up because it was 10 bucks. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I'm playing it and uh and I'm I'm hanging out with like Aldous and Ravener, like in a back room. Mm. And I'm telling them about this game I'm playing. And so they both start like listing off all these characters and like the, the story and all this shit. And I'm like, oh, have you guys played the game? And they're like, no, this is fucking, this is Dungeons and Dragons from like 40 years ago, bro. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I don't know. I have no, no clue. And then, so then Aldous was like, um, what did he say? He was like, it's a, uh, you know, it's like a, a kid version of Lord of the Rings. And I said, oh, I could see that because as I'm playing it, like there are moments where it felt like what I remembered from the Lord of the Ring movies. Uh, I was like, well, I've only seen them once, so I don't remember. So then I, I'm on HBO one night and they have all the extended cuts. And I was like, oh, I could watch this again. You know, I, I haven't seen it in so long. And now I'm kind of much more interested in the lore and the, you know, the fantasy aspect. I, like I used to hate fantasy. You know, I, I kind of like it a lot. And so I'm watching it. And I finished the the first one, The Fellowship, and I, I hit Mike up. And I'm like, that's like the, one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> it's like, that was just amazing. And he's like, yeah, and I know. Like, I was like, yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> Victoria like, oh, asked me, what's now? your favorite movie? And I said, it's Lord of the Rings. Like, that when, I, when I, I'm, I'm taking in the whole sequel, I was like, if I, if I really say, like, what movie could I not? Would I really not want to just go away? Like, what will I always watch? And it's the Lord of the... Like, I just love going back to it. I, I think it was a massive triumph. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's good that you finally discovered it uh, a little late. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Tolkien? <laughs> Have you ever heard of this guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, never too, you know, never too late to uh, to get involved. Anyway, so I, I started Two Towers. And see, I didn't like Two Towers in the theater. I remember I fell asleep and I woke up and like these trees were like sticking their head mm -hmm. in the water because they're on fire. So and I'm like, and I went back to bed. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's going on. Now there's talking trees. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm watching it and I, I got to say, I haven't really changed my opinion. Like I'm halfway through it and I'm like, it's still kind of boring. Like it actually feels well, you're watching the extended cuts, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they extended the ever living out of that movie. <laughs> I mean, I even hours. me, and I'm like, I just told you I think it was the you know, the greatest movies, uh, you know. Uh yeah, I watched the extended cuts and I'm, my thinking was, well, I'm not gonna do that again. Like okay. once is well, enough. I want the whole like, story, and I'm not going to read the books anytime soon. Yeah, but you're not. I mean, you're not really getting the whole story. You're getting the movie adaptation of it. The whole story is contained within the original theatrical cuts. Like you okay. know, that with the with the un, you know, it's basically just like before the editor sat um, Jackson down and was like, "Dude, <laughs> come on." Well, yeah, because there's be there are scenes in there where it's like, look at all the villagers walking, and then there's yeah. another scene of the villagers walking. <laughs> like, I got it. <laughs> it's a long trek. <laughs> let's let's yeah. fucking let's get the helms deep already, you know. Um, it's uh no look, it's it is it is the the you know my least favorite of the three, but there are some great moments in that. In that well, I'm time. hoping it picks up because, like I said, I'm what, what are you up to? It. Where did I stop? It's exactly halfway, and uh, okay, let me think here. God, so much is happening. So, there, 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 hang on. Did you get past? Is the king still uh, a monger? Like, is he still all like that? Yeah, like, uh. So like Gandalf when the Kong Gray like tricked tricked him right, and he's like, "I'm Gandalf the White, bitch." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, "Oh no!" Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they like, all right, so he he's, zaps he's him, the, you know? he's, he's woken up again. 
Yeah, yeah. You know what else is weird about it? It feels, and I don't know. I mean, maybe this is the case. Because I remember really liking Return of the King. And it almost feels like Two Towers wasn't directed by Peter Jackson. And I know they were. But it, I'm almost wondering if he spent more time in prep for Return of the King. Because a lot of the shots in this are very basic. And there's not a lot of cinematography going on. And it almost feels like a lot of second oh, unit directors no, did the second that. one. I don't know about that. There's like some of those sweeping shots. Uh, I, I'll tell you, it was all filmed together. Like it was all filmed as one film. The whole thing. So... No, they went yeah, down to it, it just there are shots where I mean there's some sweeping shots, that's fine. But like if I'm telling you, as someone who I've just watched both of them back to back, like mm. there's a lot of just like standard two up shots, like close ups of faces, whereas in the first one it felt like they were doing more with like trying to like compose the shot and you know, like with some type of lighting. This is just like we're outside on a horse. <laughs> like okay, that's fine, I guess. Mo says, Return of the King cut out the two coolest scenes. Which are those, Mo? And left in the pillow fight scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just wait to the pillow fight scene. If you thought Top Gun was a little homoerotic, you just wait until the five-minute slow-motion pillow fight scene. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but there, oh, there's oh. a bit. It does get a bit like you do. There are a few points in... The Lord of the Rings, particularly in Return of the King, where you do wonder for a second, are they going to start kissing? <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah, like Frodo and Sam. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I love you, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> All right. You, you got, it, it was written a different time. It's about friendship. Time. <laughs> it's, about the, it's about the kind of bond that you can only find in that unique situation. Is Tolkien uh, gay? No, no, no. Oh. He had a family. Uh, Mouth of Sauron and Death of Saruman. Oh, all right. Yes, okay. So, yeah. So, you're to, yeah. So, the if you watch the extended version, you will see the Mouth of Sauron and the uh, Death of Saruman in there. Um, they were cut. And uh, Christopher Lee never forgave Peter Jackson for that, I don't think. Um, because he already had to deal with the fact that. Essentially, in the books, um, I'll, I'll just say, like, this isn't really a spoiler because you already watched it. Um, but uh, in the books, at the very at the, sort of the end, um, they go back home and it's all messed up. And uh, Saruman had, had, like, found out where the hobbits lived and, like, gone and destroyed their little village thing. And the whole oh. point being, you know, like, there is nowhere on earth that you can just stay pristine forever and you, know, you can escape war and everything like like it will everything will eventually come to you if you let it you know and, and then they just got rid of that and christopher lee that he he's done so many interviews about that i mean when he was still alive um about how that really kind of missed the point of lord of the rings but uh peter jackson was just like there's already eight endings in this friggin yeah. movie we can't add another too. one we can't like actually that would like have picked up the story again and started the whole thing again now we've got to go on another adventure where we're getting saruman out um oh good actually christopher lee did fix things up with jackson before he passed away that's good to hear um he was not uh, there's so many interviews where he was not a happy camper um about because yeah, like Mo's right. Like Saruman just you just forgot about him. He's just like, oh, like he was a big bad guy in two movies, and then he just wasn't in Oh, I thought doesn't one. doesn't Gandalf kill him? He does. That's an extended scene. Oh no, but, Gandalf. Yeah, I always thought him. I remembered him getting killed. But maybe he maybe. does get yeah, he he okay. does get killed in the movies, but not in the theatricals. In the theatricals, he just you never hear from him again. He got oh, his, he weird. got, he got his, uh, he, and it wasn't Gandalf. It was, it was, um, worm tongue. Um, in the extended, you get to see it. Like they did, a, that was sort of like, 
uh, the alternative to the raising of the Shire. Um, they had a scene where, yeah, they all, you know, that was the, uh, I think that was the scene where they did a tro -lo 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 -lo, like to cut, uh, if you remember that meme. But uh, vaguely, uh, some person says he wasn't gay, he was just British. That's uh, so Gandalf said, Grab a hold of my beard, Samwise. I've yet to show you my other magic stuff. There's some friggin', I gotta watch it again. Now, now we're talking about it. I gotta have to watch it again. This is some of the some of the dialogue in that is just so classic. Um, I really do. Also, really yeah, do th it. there's some shots of Smeagol that look really good, and other ones that like I'm like, uh, looks kind of dated. I don't, I don't mind about that. Uh, speaking of like cool effects, did you see The Last of Us? No, I'll, my wife wants to watch it, so I told her we'd watch it together. But her sister's in town, so we'll wait till she's gone. Mm. Uh, they're all, um, as far as I'm aware, I mean the the creatures. So did you play the game? Did you you, you watch? No, you I I just it? I just wasn't into it. Yeah uh the well i mean the, the it's a it's a zombie movie but instead of like a virus it's a fungus oh i mean um, i know everything about it i just, I just oh okay cool yeah yeah, yeah. all right uh yeah the, the uh the zombies they're all like as far as i'm aware they're all um physical like you know they're, they're traditionally made oh, that's cool. and it looks amazing like i i'm gonna make a short about it later uh, after we get off the stream um like they look so cool they're some of the best uh you know kind of new monsters to hit tv i reckon i've seen in a long time and a cool thing about it is they have all different kinds uh there's clickers and runners and bloaters and all this sort of stuff and they all look cool already so uh mm. you know th and that like i mean that stuff never dates because it it'll always look rad like it's funny you know you don't really notice it at the time with the digital stuff but eventually you do kind of uh you do kind of see like what the kind of the artifacts of the digital like you can tell what era it's made in when it's digital oh yeah sure a lot of the time and i get why they did it because like, we watched Jurassic park the other day and it's Oh yeah, that's a rubber dinosaur. You know, there's no it's very dry. Dinosaurs are very dry and rubbery like <laughs> Jurassic Park, the original. Oh yeah. Um but uh yeah. Jeremy says it was really good. Yeah, Jeremy did a, a stream about it. I'm pumped. I'm really looking for even though I I don't agree. 100% on the casting with a lot of these guys who do. I don't agree with the portrayal necessarily, but you know, whatever, it's their show. Um, good show. Oh, I mean, it's one episode. It's a good episode, I should say. My, my worry is, and this is what you see with a lot of these shows these days, is the first episode's good, and then it's just like. But that's what people are saying on Twitter. Bore, yeah. bore it's just like we've spent, you know, the whole second and third episode is like, we're going to be in a truck talking for <laughs> like the whole <laughs> thing. Like, you know, like, oh, God. Um, that's what happened with a show recently called Peripheral. I don't know if you caught that with uh, the girl from Kick-Ass in it. Well, she's not a girl. Oh, okay. She's a woman. Uh -oh. uh, she's all grown up good for her and man the first episode of peripheral was just holy sh it was great it was that you know it's essentially uh it's sort of like the near future everyone's just you know using vr games and stuff there's a whole economy based around it and she's like really good at it but she's got you know to do real life stuff her mum's sick anyway she's gonna get sucked into this situation and it kind of bleeds into real life and they have to fight like real life stuff at the same time that she's fighting in the sort of digital it was really good and then 
Second episode was a bit slower, and I was like, all right, they're just sort of, yeah, they're just building the tension. Uh, no, they weren't. They were just, and it just got slower and slower, and then, and then it just. I, I remember, like, back in the day when there was a slow episode, usually what would happen is there would be, like, like a mini arc, right? There would be, like, I don't know, let's say you're watching The Shield or something, or 24, it's like, all right, we did like six episodes or eight episodes, all high octane. And then it's like, before the next arc, we need like a breather episode. And the breather episode was like much more subdued. It was just to like kind of tie up loose ends and set up for the next go around. And and you kind of knew it was kind of like Sopranos would do that a lot. And then and then you would start on the next on the next mission or whatever it was. But now it's just like they all feel like that. And I'm just, it's so tiresome. And I'm just like, you know, it used to be like you would take, like, if you had 24 episodes, you'd get 20 stories. And now it's like, all oh, right. Yeah. 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 You know, and now it's like, now you okay, get, yeah, you're lucky if you get a full story out of that. Well, now eight. it takes 20 episodes to make get yeah. one story. <laughs> I'm just like, it takes for fucking ever. Um, awesome one says, as you're saying, there's zero male leadership in the show, it was pretty but boring. I disagree. I saw as was critiquing it, um, I thought it was really, really quite action packed. I mean, I think they actually, I think they nailed it. I think they really nailed it. Uh, uh, Jeremy says, first episode always has the most effort put into it because that's where the studios watch to determine if they're going to pick up for a whole season or not. Yeah, I mean, let's hope it it continues on. Um, and usually, yeah, if they put all the money, like it looks, ex- it looked expensive. It looked really expensive. Uh, yeah, like that first so, episode of Walking yeah. Dead is like a movie. It's like a great, and then you know, you know, eventually they're like, well, the whole episode's on a farm. I'm like, oh god, come on, <laughs> you gotta do something else here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Eric doesn't watch current TV. There's some good stuff out there. Congratulations. I understand. Eric Eric July said the same thing. He's like, I just watch streams and, you know, just focus on my own stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I've always, ever since Heroes, you know, I, I was totally off TV as well. And then Heroes came out. And that, for me, kind of changed the game. And I was like, I'm into this. And then Lost came out, and it's just sort of been going from then. It's sort of become a part of my life where I just, I don't know, we're, we're humans. We like to have stories. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been into them ever since. Uh, Dave says, uh, love the first Last of Us game. It was a classic. Uh, we live in an age of IP destruction and fan mockery. The game was enough for me. I'm not wasting a second on TV show. Well, I'll tell you what. From this first episode, there is no destruction of the IP happening here. As far as in terms of like... Um, what's the word? Um, faithfulness to the source material. I mean, it was a... It was a, a literally a almost, you know, shot for shot remake of the first. I guess, I'd say probably hour of the game, but like condensed, maybe even longer because they, they took out a lot of the actual gameplay. Um, that didn't really progress the story. So, like you know, at the, at the start where they like have to go and get their their guns or something was it they was it guns or was it the battery i can't remember they took that out which is fine because you know let's get to the part where they lo- got to take her and yeah i thought it see, was uh see was really that's good. weird to me because that raises another question if if it's a f- completely faithful adaptation w- why do it like well because yeah i get what you're saying because yeah, yeah. Because people aren't going to play the game. 
and I think you, I think you can, I think it's a, it's a, if it, okay, if it was a TV show, if the, if the original Last of Us game was a TV show that was a classic and everyone loved, I agree. Why do it again? Swapping mediums, real actors now, in, in, as opposed to 3D characters. Uh, obviously, they had actors voicing it. Um, uh, and, and it just changes the scope. It, it is a different medium. It's like it's like taking a story from a comic to, to a TV show or a movie. It's different. You have to adapt it. It is a there there is differences. But what what I'm saying is, uh, just like how 300 really, you know, took what was on the page and put it on the screen, um, in a really successful way, and a lot of other things have as well. Watchmen to an extent um i think it i think this did the same thing i mean i i get what you're saying like if you've played the game you probably don't need to see it but um well yeah i mean i, guess I like to me, see it it's it's the difference i think is when it's a book or a comic there is a difference when it's sort of live actiony and you know people are playing these roles but pe i mean yeah i mean the video game is it was very realistic looking like you've you saw actors yeah. portraying these characters so i mean it's like it's like watching a live action cutscene. <laughs> it's like oh well, i i kind of already watched it i already saw it it happened it's sort of like, it, like they are dealing what they've done is they've sort of taken away not a lot but obviously they, they really condensed the actual gameplay down into just a bit of action you can't you don't just want to have you know because in, in, in a video game you're gonna have you're gonna be playing the action for 20 30 minutes you know you're not going to do that in a tv show it's going to be cut down to about 30 seconds so it's it's right. it's cut scene to cut scene with a little bit of that gameplay mixed in there but what they've done is they've also added extra stuff that they didn't have in the game because well it wasn't written it wasn't part of the story and also it would have just been a game and there was already a lot of cut scenes in that game you know it was like it was like playing a movie so um you know, they, they added a whole bunch more of the backstory with his daughter before. Well, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, and, you know, I look, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I was... And yes, but, Pedro no, I, Pascal, I, Eric, was really good in it. He was like, he was Joel. He was really good in it. Uh, he, he was... He, he nailed it. I'm... Uh... I'm not even really that against it, I guess. I just, you know, like, I know when they made the Dark Knight Returns movie, you know, I love that comic, so I was totally about the movie. I didn't think Peter Weller was particularly good as the voice of Batman, but, like, the animation was good. Like, the story, like, they nailed it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, so it was cool to see it come to life in that sense. Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I get it. I mean, like, my wife's not going to play the last of us but if she wants to know the story i guess she could watch this thing yeah what are you guys saying uh, they made Joel's daughter black. Why is everyone's close family black in every remake? How does that make it better? I mean, she was a good, she was really good, that actress. She really, she really, I felt, I mean, you didn't really spend much time with her, but the time that you did spend in the game was obviously very impactful and set the scene for the whole thing uh i get it if you if you're just done with that uh yeah you know if that's going to annoy you i understand i i really do um like i'm probably more against race swapping than most people i know a lot of people don't really care uh especially if it's not relevant to the character but to me that just says to me well then you don't accept that the character is supposed to be pre representing a real person which they are. Um, having said that, you never meet the mum, so you just assume, okay, well, the mum was obviously black. And the kid is clearly half black. She's not 
think of, you know, she's not a pure blood. <laughs> so it's like, you know, whatever. I mean, they really changed the look of Ellie as well, her face. Uh, you know, people are they, they're talking about that. I To me, the biggest change... And again, I, this in the stream today, I was like, no one was having it. I said I felt like she was way too played way too aggressively by that actress, and everyone was like, no, that's exactly what she was like. I was like, oh, I guess we have a different interpretation. I have no African kids, or someone. Um, not with that attitude. Not that I know of. <laughs> uh. Yeah, see, Jeremy, it do, he says it doesn't bother him if the characters are race swapped. Um, it doesn't have, it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't bother him personally. For me, it does bother me a little bit. But you're I, at my, the my point issue now. Is, yeah, like it comes down to the reason behind it. Yes. If it's like you know, it's like oh well, if it's for inclusivity, it's like uh okay. But like you got to realize when you do stuff like that. You have the potential to change the culture of the characters. And so it's like, well, because they're, you know, different colored people act different ways in different cultures. It's just a thing. Like if suddenly, um, you know, you're watching Robin Hood and everyone is Asian. Well, that's the different movie. <laughs> like that wouldn't make any sense. So, uh, you know, like at certain aspects of whatever the story is, you have to make sure that the characters are all like kind of like, uh, you know, coherent. Right. Otherwise, it's just like it's fucking doesn't make it. Yeah, it's just it's just if it's too random then it, it feels like they don't yeah. know what they're doing. And and again and again, it just it just like people can't change their race. Yeah. And people try, but they can't. They're, they're like, that's not unless you're. Rachel Dolezal or Talcum X. Like, you can't change your race. And when you make characters, you're supposed to be trying to create real people in a story. And when you when you can say, oh, they can be black now. They can change their hair. They can change their sex. Well, it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's not integral to the character. All you're saying is, okay, so you never really considered this person a real, this character a real person. They're just a, a, a placeholder, a token piece of thing that you can put in there and stop around like that's to me that's not how um how characters should work so that's where i that's my biggest bugaboo with it uh, even when it, it really doesn't their, their race doesn't actually affect the story in this case it doesn't because you don't ever see the mother so you just assume obviously she was black um it doesn't it doesn't have any of those runoff effects that you're describing there yeah but on the top of it like what uh eric says yeah if it's like if it's done for the agenda yeah that's the like there's the reason okay well that's i don't think i don't see that as a good enough reason uh now get to getting into nick fury in the mcu to me the like the reason why that worked was because they wanted a very specific man who was samuel L. jackson like they wanted to create a very specific character. There's no one else who can play Samuel L. Jackson other than Samuel Samuel L. Jackson, and he happens to be black. So therefore, now in a in a character like um, Ray Sopping Death in uh, Sandman, and the Sandman fans rave about how oh she stole the show and she was the best death ever, and I'm like she was just a normal woman anyone could have played that role literally Ooh. anyone and she's not even an, a well-known actress so it's not like oh, they you know we just we really desperately needed oprah winfrey in the role of you know i don't know halle berry or someone uh whoop whoopi goldberg i don't know but like so it, it that's why it didn't really and then and on top of that the, the character of death is so iconic as a like a skinny little white girl that it really didn't didn't go down well um again too it's it's also like who you're changing because it for, at least recently it, it's just like well we're changing everyone except the white guy and now the white guy's a bad guy it's like okay well 
now it seems like you're purposefully trying to alter things because you know like they said like there's an agenda in place and you know it's like reverse tokenism 40% Zed says the people that do race ops do it because they hate white people and want them dead, but keep consuming product and get excited for the next product. Damn. Some of you guys are serious. You guys are serious about this stuff. And I, I respect that. I don't, I'm not as, I, I'm not as hardcore as you guys. You guys are like, well, what's annoying about, I think the whole conversation is that, everyone has a two cents on it but it seems to me that whenever it's like the the lefty position it's just very basic in its interpretation of why it's being done and there's mm -hmm. no nuance to any of the argument and it's just like well it's like well it's just because it's it's the blacks turn it's like that's not an argument you really so stupid and that's that that's sounds? literally the reason too it's yeah. like you guys had it long enough you're just angry that the world is not about you anymore and blah 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 and it's time to get it back and that's all that's the whole argument is re yeah, it's that's revenge a, that's, that's, a, that's really. a bad argument if, if if your argument is it's my turn it's like well that's 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 not gonna you know change minds or change hearts that's a you know that's like that's that's just gonna create more of a divide because a lot of people think that that's a ridiculous sentiment uh dave says why don't people say no to this just like how everyone on maths told well a wizard of the coast to f off um i genuinely think it's because most people enjoy it uh i think like people who take your position dave and 40 percent zed uh yeah i don't i just don't think there's enough of you guys to really make a difference like people who are just going to just turn off and say no nah, i'm not going to consume any of this anymore i think that's probably why like boycotts don't really work uh you can tell people to I don't know, unsubscribe from netflix and disney and everything till the cows come home it's just i don't think it's gonna happen that way because i just don't think i just don't think that opinion is anywhere near the majority i think it's pretty um what's the word i'm looking for well it's, it's a lower low enough percentage uh is australia asia says ocean one no and then mo says no it's oceana mel says it's oceana as well too i i reject both sentiments australia is australia australia is a continent it's its own thing we exist down here in and of ourselves uh, we're close to asia we're tucked underneath asia but we're not asia and if we accept Oceania, that means it's like, what is that? Like Tonga is part of us? Samoa? Indonesia? No. Nah. I reject. I might be alone on that. Uh, Jeremy says, yeah, the second I see agenda, I'm out. But if something starts up good like this, I'm going to give it a chance. I'd rather enjoy something than be outraged all the time like we see on so many channels. Yeah. Asia's where Asia's taint, the balls of Asia. <laughs> We're dangling below. Now throw the shackles off the metric of the metric system. Never. What? Like you guys just don't know. The metric system is the bee's knees. I'm not getting anything done coloring on stream, and I really need to get this finished. So I think we're probably going to end it there um i'll come back tomorrow morning and just like absolutely smash out uh finish this off smash out uh i'm gonna smash boom operator oh, that didn't sound good i mean i'm gonna yeah. smash uh high heels uh, mel won't like that uh <laughs> let me get this thing done we need to get it done uh so that we can really uh get out there and start promoting it hopefully uh sell some more uh 
Oh, well, interesting show. Good. Good. Um, get back to me when the metric system puts a man on the moon. I think China are trying to do that. I think China are going to the moon. I mean, they say they are. They're going to get there. They're going to be like, oh, it's a space station. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's hollow. The lizard people are already here. <laughs> well, <they> were... <laughs> um, oh, I get it. Tomorrow, uh, I think Rob and I will be doing our show at uh, same time as this. And then the day after that, uh, I'm back in action. And we're also doing uh, the two players show. Do we know what game we're playing yet? I don't know, but you and I really need to do some we, yeah, we, ahead yeah, of time. Let's, let's yeah, make sure yeah. that it actually works Works. this time was a disaster that was yeah that was that was really bad (laughs) hal mo hal chat that's no chinese buffet on the moon (laughs) ha nasa does use metric take that suckers all right everyone uh i don't that camel for hanging out uh go back boots and heels go back the quadriptic cover go back his new um awesome uh standee thing there's also the press and acevedo print if you haven't back uh, the second chance campaign sign up to replicator what else sign up to paint a deck all good stuff and what about uh, that thing sure that rob's we... doing you know that like that... spinning wheel yeah, sign kind of... up thing oh yes the great giveaway the great wheel giveaway.com forward slash sign up i couldn't get that yeah <laughs> mailchimp is like when you get basic mailchimp they're like, we, there's only so much we can offer you. All right, we're not going to give you yeah, a full it, URL. They're, they're kind of dicks about it too. <laughs> they're like, yeah. oh, that'd be nice. Wouldn't you like that? Fuck off. <laughs> no, well, they say like, oh yeah, you can do that. So you go to click it, and they're like, nineteen ninety nine a month. Be, every be twenty bucks. Thank you, you. It's like a maze, and every turn <laughs> is has a paywall on it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Oh, and also, uh, Witching Hour tomorrow with Joe Ball. Ooh, excellent. Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, make sure you sub to Jeremy as well. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm sending us out. I uh, want to thank the uh, most amazing, incredible, spectacular, always ever phenomenal, sexiest chat in all of CG. I will see you guys soon. Good night. Individually, we are weak, like a single twig. But as a bundle, we form a mighty fat...